my goodness. I, it warms my heart to see you. How are you? Oh my God. Can I tell you, I have to tell you, this has been, it's going to end up being my biggest month ever. Awesome. And I'm not even selling any products yet. I am so stinking busy with my law practice. I don't know what happened, but like everyone is like, everyone wants a trademark. Everyone wants to sue their infringer, you know? And I'm just like, oh, dang. Oh my <laughs> gosh. Fabulous, but That's it's fabulous. awesome. Like I have people calling me and going, yeah, I want three trademark applications and you know, it's been awesome. Well, that's always good to hear. Yeah. yeah. I was, I was made, I was majorly bummed that the event that we were both going to be at was postponed. So. Oh, I'm going to the one in June actually. Are oh, you that's going? Cool. Um, I'm, I'm probably not going to be able to make that, but we're still trying to figure things out. Okay. And I'll probably go to his sprint event in July. I just, I just can't get away this weekend. It's my birthday. I'm going to be oh. 50, 50 years old. Can you No believe it? way. Way. <laughs> oh my gosh. Can I just say that like you look freaking amazing for your well, age. thank you. Happy birthday. <laughs> oh my yeah, gosh. Yeah, I don't feel 50, that's for sure. I'm kind of floored. It's like the, what you know. It's weird. <laughs> is it? When is your birthday? May 24th. I mine tomorrow. We're in two. Oh, oh, oh Yvonne. Oh. Nice to see you too. Yeah, I have problem with Facebook. Happy birthday. Uh, we, don't we all have problems with Facebook, guys? It happens to us all. Like, seriously. Yeah. Hey, this David, week, they come to two of my account. Or someone is, someone is talking or something. I'm trying to figure out who it is. Let me mute everyone, and then, I'll, okay. and, and then you guys can mute yourself. Let's okay, cool. Okay, there we go. Now, Angela and Yvonne. Relief, relief. But anyway, I'm super excited because I'm starting a group that I'm, I'm going to show people next week and I'm building out the, uh, the page right now. Uh, how, to, how I do what I do on live video because I have people messaging me constantly. Hey, how are you doing? What are you doing? What equipment are you using? You know, I, I'm having a mindset problem with it, blah, blah, blah. And so I just thought, well, I'll just do a boot camp. So That's a really good idea. Yeah, so I'm going to do a boot camp and uh, just show people what I do and how I do it and why I do it and all of that. That's, a, that's super freaking cool. That brings me to, I see Sabrina's on here too. Sabrina is my funnel person, which by oh, the way, awesome. she's freaking amazing. Can I just show you guys like, so how many of you guys have been following like what I've been doing over the last 90 days? I cannot wait to release this because we're only about a week and a half in and I'm already like seeing so many freaking results. My $7 program is still selling my premium membership selling all with video ads. That's all I'm doing. No conversion campaigns, no nothing. I'm out to prove that it doesn't matter which objective you choose that as long as you're putting the right content in front of the right people, at the right time, mm -hmm. your stuff is going to convert. And guys, I've been documenting every single thing you guys are actually going to get every single page of the binder. Wow. Like, I'm, it's, I'm so freaking excited to be doing this case study because you guys know I'm not going to sell anything or teach you guys anything that I'm not going to do myself. Absolutely. And, it first. and so Sabrina is actually working on helping me turn this into a really cool membership to where you guys can literally follow this along every day for 90 days and have your own 90 self-guided 90 day challenge. And it's going to be it. just using, it's going to be budget friendly. I'm only spending a thousand dollars over the next three months. That's it. Wow. A thousand dollars, three months, all organic strategies. It's funny because I went to an Alex Sharpen um, mastermind and it's his binder. And I just like tore everything out and put my own stuff in there. there you go. But, and it's going to be really cool. We're going to have like a, a, a I'm going to mail you guys like a, a binder that's very similar to this, but all my handwritten stuff. Um, I was very inspired. I don't know how many of you guys are Nirvana fans. Um, I'm a huge, I'm a huge Nirvana fan. And do you guys remember when Kurt Cobain passed away, they released his diary all in handwritten stuff. So that was inspired by that. And I, I'm just, I'm going to be posting like screenshots of like my posts and everything. So you guys are going to have a physical thing to follow and a video thing to follow as well. So every single day you're going to log in, you're going to get one thing that you can do between five to 10 minutes, very easy to implement. Yes. And I'm making sure that everything is just very bite-sized. It's not all going to be paid ads. It's going to be a mix of organic video marketing and paid strategies. Cause I'm trying to like 
make that shift. And I'm just trying to do something that's totally different than what everyone else is doing. I but love of course, it. I want to prove it myself first. So anyway, that's my, that's the only promo I'm going to do for today. I just kind of wanted to give you guys a little insight on what I'm doing. Angela, you have your hand up. Oh, I want to know. How, what's the price point? How do we get in? It's only going to be literally $90. I'm going to charge 90 bucks. It's going to be you are crazy. for 90 days. A dollar a strategy. That's it. You're wow. crazy. You're crazy, but I love you. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy, yeah. Right? But you know what? This whole Thank point me. to do this. Right, Cam? More <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're crazy, Mark me down. You. Where's my card? Yeah. Sign Where's me up, card? baby. Send me a payment link. Yeah. <laughs> you, got, you guys know up until the launch, I'm going to do all kinds of fun stuff. Take my in money. Sign in. <laughs> but it's going to be, it's going to be something that's really, it's, it's going to be fun. And I'm hoping that it's going to change a lot of people's perspective on what it means to really be successful online. Like it's not about, you know, all of the tactics and all of the little like hacks and everything. Like it's really just about putting out really good content in front of the right people. Yeah. And that's it. It doesn't, it doesn't have to cost a million dollars. Can I tell you uh, something? Can I say something? Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Yvonne, go ahead, sweets. No, I'll finish talking and then I'll out then. So. <laughs> I was just going to say, you know, um, someone contacted me. He, he has four trademark applications in a couple different classes that he wants to file and he wants me to do it. And he came to me because he watches my videos. Exactly. <laughs> I literally just had, I just had a call with one of my clients today and he just couldn't understand. Like he's very direct marketing. I will, I won't say who he is. I, he's someone that I truly like respect so much. He's so good at what he does. He does link, LinkedIn lead generation, but it's all direct response, right? Uh -huh. So he and his team literally just cold message a whole bunch of people book appointments for their clients, which is awesome. He wanted to see if what he does on LinkedIn could translate over to Facebook advertising. And so he, he, but he, he couldn't wrap his head around what my strategy was doing was cause he was like, well, there's no ROI. I'm like, do you not understand? Like, it's all about sustainability and building a brand because just because they don't buy, think about this. You know, I'll, I'll use this as an example. So how many times have you guys seen a commercial for something? and you didn't buy it for the first like 10 times that you saw the commercial, how did you go buy it? You, were, you eventually went to the store and bought it, right? You didn't click the TV, you didn't click a button on the TV and be like, I'm gonna buy this now, right? So how do they measure that conversion? You don't, like it's just all about reminding your audience that you're there and you're ready. Like I'll use Angela, cause, cause hers is a really good example. Someone that might not be ready right now, for their, to do their trademark. But if Angela has the right video strategy and continues to put her content in front of people, guess what? That's going to compound over time. And so when people are ready to make that decision, who are they going to recommend? Who are they going to recommend to their friends? Because they keep seeing Angela's ads or her content inside the newsfeed. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to gain momentum. If Facebook advertising goes away tomorrow, Will we still have a way for people to find us and to generate leads for our business? You know, it's not just about that direct response. It's about building a brand. If Facebook went away tomorrow, how many of you guys would know how to find me? Probably everyone here would know how to find me. Like you would just like type in Laurel Portier and you'd see my Instagram account. You would, you know, see everything else. You would know how to contact me. But the fact that you would go to contact me, that's the point, right? Yeah. I mean, you would I've be had like, people... wait, where's Laurel? I've had people recommend me, um, you know, the ClickFunnels group has like 30,000 people in it and someone will say, you know, who's, who's the go-to for trademarks and like 17 people, I'm not even kidding, will recommend me. I'm always one of those people. Oh, thank you. But I'm, <laughs> I'm always, always like, I'm always like Angela, Angela, Angela. Well, like, but I'm know. always floored because I, these are people that I didn't even know were watching my videos, right? Like, did I tell you about this? Um, do you know who? Bond Halbert is? Sounds familiar. Gary Halbert is probably one of the most famous copywriters that ever lived, and that's his son. And his son's a copywriter, both of them actually, um, Bond and his brother. I forget his brother's name. They're both copywriters. And Bond knows me. We've seen each other at a couple of live seminars. And he told his Facebook group of 8,000 people 
hey, um, all of you copywriters here, you really ought to be following Angela Langlots and be watching her trademark and copyright videos. And I wasn't even in his group. A friend of mine was and screenshotted it and sent it to me. And I was like, holy crap. <laughs> I didn't even know this guy was watching my videos. Right, you but know? you're not measuring that as an ROI on an ad, right? Right. But it's there. And, yeah. that, and that's what I'm trying to like, like get with like all of this, like all of these, these tricks and, you know, tactics and, and strategies that I'm showing you guys is like, just getting yourself out there is going to compound over time to where it's like, yeah, someone might not buy now, but they're recommending you to their friends. They're watching your videos. They're just not engaging with your content. Yeah. So you, you can't get discouraged if you don't see that conversion happening, you know, like right then and there, like some of the best retargeting ads have zero conversions. But by the time some of my clients get on the phone, they're like, I just had to get on the phone with you. You're popping up everywhere, you know? Right. Yeah. And that's like the effect. You're not going to see that result in the ad spend, but you're going to see the result whenever you get on the phone with people. Um, so I'll, I'll open it up. Who's, who's got something that they want to talk about or show or have something. Yeah. Yvonne, you're, you're Yvonne's waving her hand. Um, I, like I said to you, um, can I, and I'm going this quickly, can you send me the 10 minutes Instagram strategy, please, huh? Because I'm, I need it. Because I, you reply, don't I replied to your post in the group. I didn't find it. Mm. I sent you the, um, I posted the link to the Instagram, um, the document on your post. Oh, I didn't, can you check me? Sorry, because I, you know, I had a problem with Facebook this week and, um, they, they canceled both of my, while I was doing a Facebook ad on both of my Facebook accounts, um, it just shut me down and I couldn't go in. I had to send in the documents and I'm telling you the truth. I'm afraid of doing Facebook ads now. So that's what I wanted to ask you during the call, but maybe somebody else also had the same problem as me. Um, if, um, if it's possible, if we have problem with Facebook, can we do Instagram ads? Oh, it would be the same thing. If, so it's uh, the same. It's under the same rules as Facebook, but YouTube advertising would be a really good platform for you. They're a little bit more lax with what you're trying to do. But again, if we follow the same strategies that we've been talking about as far as, because be, so just so everyone knows, Yvonne does affiliate marketing, which you guys can know could be a very tough one for Facebook, you know, for Facebook advertising. And so we always have to lead with value not with our offer, right? Because affiliate offers come and go. But, and so we just have to learn how to market without using specific things. And here's, here's a little trick. It's not really a trick, it's just a rule of thumb. Anytime my clients have a rejected ad, we've gone through the appeal, and let's say that it still gets rejected, I freaking delete it. I don't care how much data that ad has on it, I delete it. Um, there's a way. So if you type in the search bar inside business manager account quality, it will tell you how many ads that you have that have been rejected, how many are in review and how many have been changed. I would do that once a week just because here's the thing I've had clients and this has happened to me before as well is that Facebook will go back for some reason, ads that have been turned yeah, off for years. So. And they will all of a sudden go and reject a whole bunch of ads that you would have never known because they've been turned off. And so every single week I started making a habit of going into the business manager, typing in account quality and just looking to see what my accounts and my client accounts look like. Okay. Because that is going to be a huge thing right now. Artificial intelligence has been taking over Facebook advertising. I'll be totally transparent with you guys. I had about two weeks ago, Facebook decided that my profile, they didn't want me advertising anymore. So you can imagine for someone who owns an agency, how detrimental that could <laughs> have been your brain. my business, right? I couldn't own any business managers. I couldn't, but I had all my backups in place. I had my wife, I had another ads manager that I had hired for just in case that that happens. And so basically I had other people that were admins of my business manager. I had other people who were admins of my Facebook page, other people who were admins of my ad accounts. And so even though I was hands off, I had a backup plan. And you know, that's just kind of like the universe telling me we're all, you need to stop being a button pusher and you need to start being a strategist and let other people push the buttons for you. So don't ever think that like, but guess what? I got my ad account privileges back. Like I got my, my profile unbanned. 
Um, so that was very, very thankful, but we always have to like, I know that Facebook advertising can be so freaking frustrating. Trust me. I deal with it every day. I'm on Facebook chat three to four times a day for clients, like trying to get their ads pushed through. So it happens to everyone, even though like it even happens to me, I've been doing ads for over 11 years. I still get my ads rejected. I still get ad accounts shut down. I still have all of this stuff happen to me. Even though you could be following the rules 100%, there's no guarantee that you will ever, you know, every one of us here on this call is at one point going to get their ad account shut down. Someone in, on this call is going to get their profile banned. It's, it's all just part of the whole thing of building a sustainable business. And so that was just kind of like the thing that was like, oh crap, you know, you got to have a backup plan. You got to know what to do. And so you got to, you've got, you've got to diversify what you're doing. Like if Facebook, if anyone here, if Facebook goes away tomorrow, if you don't have a business, we need to come up with a, with a backup plan for you because we cannot rely on Facebook for sure. Can, so can you resend it for me? Because probably it has been all cut down and I can't, and I can't find it. And, uh, that's why I asked my husband, uh, my husband, he's not good using Facebook and he was, oh, he had everything. And then like she said, I had my profile, two of my profile got down and um, now I'm still having problem to insert my payment because uh, my payment card, and I don't know, and, and I said, Nadine, thank God what you told me to do. Everything that was refused, I went and I canceled everything. So, um, that's so, what I some of the best, so some of the best practices, once you get an ad account shut down, don't ever, like if you start a new ad account, don't ever use the same credit card because they're actually, they'll connect the credit card to that ad account that got shut down. So if you got get an ad account that's shut down, your next ad account that you create within business manager, don't use the same credit card. Okay. Another best practices that we do and a lot of clients, it really, it gets frustrating for them. But if you get an ad account that shut down and you have a brand new ad account, run video view ads, no conversion ads for about two weeks go through a couple of payment cycles with Facebook in good standing, then run your conversion ad. What do you mean? So I, I should run just Facebook? Um... Just, just Facebook video views, like just run videos, no call to action, no nothing, just straight up value. Even if you're doing it for a dollar a day, you'll go through two payment cycles with your account in good standing. It's a great way to season a brand new ad account. Okay, I, I, really, I will change my card. Thanks for you, that you here's the thing. If you get an ad account shut down and you just create another one and you try to go do the same thing, Facebook's not only going to shut down your ad account, they're going to shut down your business manager. Yeah. And you're looking at like a lot of like craziness because we only get two business managers and people are like, well, like people were like asking me, well, why don't you go create a new profile? Have any of you guys ever tried to create a new Facebook profile? It is near, damn near impossible to create a new profile without them shutting it down within a couple of days because it goes against their terms of service to have multiple profiles. Don't do it. I'm warning you, do not try to have multiple profiles unless like you know exactly what you're doing because it is, it is not worth like going against their terms of service. Um, so someone had a really good question. For advertising, Facebook boosting gets a bad reputation. When would we use boosting? Okay, cool. I love boosted posts. Here's the right time to boost and here's the wrong time to boost. Don't, boot, don't ever boost to a cold audience. The way that I personally use the boost button, and this is, this is, I use the boost button on a daily freaking basis. What I do is I use my cold video ads to build up an audience. Think about this. Every time that you go live, people are like, well, I don't go live on my business page because there's no body there. That's okay. What you need to do is start creating custom audiences of people who are visiting your webpage, people who are visiting your Instagram profile, people who are visiting your Facebook profile. You should only use the boost button to boost posts to your warm custom audiences. I'll, I'll give you guys an example. So I, with my, with my premium members, they learn this very sophisticated audience building strategy. It's composed of three power content videos at the top and five at the bottom. And so what we're doing is we're literally funneling people from the top of the video funnel to a second tier video funnel. And we're gauging on people who watch 25% or more of either video from, from tier one or either video from tier two. If they are in between launches and they don't have a funnel, guess what we're doing? We're going live once or twice a week from our business profile. 
boosting it to the people who have made it through those two tiers of power content. Super, super powerful. This is the same strategy that we do for my clients who have million dollar launches. Like whenever I worked on Amy Porterfield's campaign last September for Think Like an Expert, guess what her people had me do? Warm up an audience for two months before she even launched. She does not do things to a cold audience. She always constantly has that warm audience video view campaign going so that whenever she's launching, it's never to a cold audience, even someone big like that. And so a lot of my clients, what we do is we literally spend weeks building up their audiences and then sending them to an offer. Now, there's not to say that you can't run campaigns straight to a low ticket offer. I do it all day long. I do it to my $7 offer. I do it to Justin Demers. You guys know I, there's total transparent, me and Justin Demers, I do his ads for him for Click Go Live. An amazing freaking program, by the way. If you have not, if you're not in Justin Demers' Click Go Live program, you're definitely missing out, it's 37 bucks. We run cold traffic straight to that offer. People who do not buy, guess where we send them? Top of that video funnel, right? So that video funnel has two uses. One, it's warming up a cold audience, and two, it's nurturing the people who didn't buy the first time. So there's all these different strategies that we could utilize, and then those people get put into a custom audience who we boost our videos to. So that is the right situation to use the boost button. Even though a lot of people tell you not to use the boost button, it's because they don't understand strategy. They're just using tactics that they've been taught with internet marketing. Lord, oh, I, got a, I got a question. Absolutely. That, What's up? How you doing? Good. Great. I posted it under the under the thread where you asked for questions. Yep, your so, audience your audiences, right? For your coloring book? Right, right. You're I said hiatus, okay. but now You're I'm ready. On. Say that again? You're dead on what you what your targeting audiences are. So what he's got an amazing thing. So he's got a coloring book that literally teaches little kids, like empowering them with like very um, motivational quotes and stuff. It's really freaking cool. And so he wants to know, so basically he's got his audiences set to parents. How do you have your audience set to parents? It's very broad. It's just parents of, of school age kids, right? Right. Um, it's women between 25 and I think 45. And one, one ad set is parents between nine and 12 year olds. And then the other ad set is parents between six to eight year olds. And then both of them um, are, have the engaged shopper um, behavior and yep. demographics perfect. are African American uh, affinity. Are, yeah, that's awesome. Are you using power content or are you using what kind, what kind of campaign are you running? Well, that was part of the question. I, I linked a couple of videos that I have created that <clears throat> I was trying, trying to determine which should I run them as um, video view campaigns or should they just be a reach campaign to video everybody? In if, it's, if you're doing video, always do video view campaigns. I didn't hear the last part. I'm sorry. Video view campaign. Okay, because it's a video, just do video view campaigns. Yep, I always run videos as video view campaigns unless they're in a retargeting campaign. I always use the reach objective for retargeting. Okay, that's that's what my question was. Do I want to use, do I want to touch everybody in that audience as many times as possible, or do I want to put it to video views? That was yep. my, my dilemma. I would do I would do reach and then retarget them with uh, I mean, I would do video view campaign and then retarget them with a reach campaign. All right. And then how else would you suggest I expand to the test or just test those two audiences? There's no other audiences to test. That's all that like putting out the video that's going to pull out your ideal customers right there. Like people overcomplicate targeting. Like think about, think about this. Like if you put out a video view campaign and you have a video and you're talking directly to your audience, and you go broad, right? Like, let's just say that you just go to parents and they don't, you, you're not even targeting like the school age kids. If you have the right messaging, parents who don't have school age kids, they're not even gonna pay attention to your video. So they're not even gonna end up in your funnel. And you're not gonna have to pay for them. Okay. So okay. the more, here's the deal guys, the more targeting you do, the more expensive your ads are. Okay. So my two audiences are, are women, like I said, with kids nine to 12, 
And then the second one right? is that's your, that's your ideal audience. So you have a coloring book. What more targeting can you do for that? Okay. I, I, I want to make sure I wasn't missing anything. Oh, you know, yeah, I'm yeah. Like, no, no, definitely. No, that's, that's good. Right. But there's, but there's no more targeting that you could do for that. That would possibly like help you any more. Like at that point, it's either going to be your messaging or your product, which you have a fucking fantastic product. I don't see your product failing. Honestly, it's a coloring book that, motivates little kids like why would they not right okay i would cool. buy that for i would buy that for my kids i don't have kids but i would buy that if i had kids. <laughs> fantastic especially yeah. especially you know you know parents who who are very you know entrepreneurial too fantastic fantastic yep i appreciate Absolutely. it thank you timothy how's it going good how you turning Good. You, I missed you on the call today. Mm, what I, I forgot something. Our premium call today. Man, I didn't get a notification. My bad. I owe you a drink. There's no notifications. It's all on the calendar. You got to put it in your Google calendar. Am I lost? Do I get another one? Do I get another shot? <laughs> no, you're good. You're good. All right, cool. You're so two, um, two questions. One is, so you mentioned boosting. Mm -hmm. to a warm audience so I boosted a post my first power video our content just to see what was going on and I boosted it to the people who currently like my page and the friends of those who like my page so is that all right I probably um, wouldn't I probably wouldn't do it to friends of friends I don't know I would test it just to see what outcome you get normally for power content I don't boost it I just place it as a video ad and run it to five different ad sets uh, you know how we have those audience, that audience worksheet that I showed you guys? I would literally start testing it to that audience before. So cold before. audience. Yep. Okay. I would do it. Yeah, go through the audience building. I redid the entire area of the premium membership. And so start with the audience builder. So I basically, with the premium program, and Angela, you should, you should still have access to this too, is I literally created the premium program to where you have four different roadmaps to choose from. One's the audience builder. One is the um, lead generator, one is the liquidator, and the other one is the discovery call accelerator. So there's four different roadmaps that you could choose from, and it literally goes step by step. So you know, there, the program is no longer you having to like mix and match things. I've got a direct roadmap for everything. So Timothy, if I were you, I would follow the audience builder because that's where you are at right now. Okay, and then the second question is, um, I have some, um, long form ad copy that I need review. Yep. Is that here or what do I need to do to get that ready? is for our, for our calls. Say that again. So, so on our pre for our premium calls, okay, that's where gotcha. you're going to get your stuff looked at. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Definitely check out the premium site. It's got the calendar for all the calls so that you can add it to your Google calendar and everything. But if you want, we can look at it right now. I don't mind. The premium calls are just much smaller. So you get, a okay, more no, I don't care. But yeah, so what do I need paid. to share my screen or? Absolutely, let's share your screen. All right, um, let's see. Share. Jackie, I noticed you weren't there today either, so just saying. Um, it says <laughs> post disabled participants. Oh yeah, check. oh yeah, Zoom changed something. Hang on, let me go. There you go. Now you should be able And to let show. me make sure Pornhub is closed first. No, Dude, that's my joke. What the hell? He <laughs> stole my joke. <laughs> All right, so this is my copy. Can you see it? Yep. All right. You want me to read it out loud? What do you want me to do? So here's my thing. Right okay. out the gate, I would never say, are you? Right? Okay. Because you're like signaling out someone. Okay. So I would cut out, are you a business owner who feels? I would just say, you know, business owners, dot. Feel like you're stuck. Feel like you're stuck. Don't use you are. Use your. Okay. Contraction. Because I will say this, artificial intelligence, the overuse of you is the first red flag. Mm. Especially when it's something that's going to make someone feel not so good about themselves. Oh, okay. So let's say, let's just take this line by line. So business owners feel like you're stuck who, and all over the place with ideas and can't seem to get going. Hmm. Let's see. 
feel like you're stuck. I'm trying to figure, I'm trying to figure out what you're trying to get. I kind of think I, I feel like I know what you're getting at. Let, let me just keep reading. I understand that feeling all too, I understand that feeling all too well because I was that person for years. The frustration I felt from watching everyone else start their business, start making their perfect salary, start living in the home of the dreams. I like that part. Like you're, you're, you're relatable to a lot of people. Let's just work, let's work on this first line. Business owners feel like, feels like you're stuck or an individual all over the business owners. I kind of feel like it needs like something like business owners, you know, can't seem to, let's see, business owners. Oh. All over the place with ideas and can't make any of them actually happen. You know, like something like that. Like you're just constantly, you know, business owners constantly coming up with new ideas, okay. but never actually getting them to, you know. I see what you're saying. Yep. Yep. Okay. Okay. Yep. So one of the other things I, I also recommend. So one of the things that I, um, one of the scripts that I have for you guys. So if you got, if you look inside the, um, the, the lead generator and the liquidator, I've got a script that I call it the DSO. So instead it used to be my PSO script and I, I slightly changed it because I'm finding that empowering them on that first line gets better results than beating them up on that first line. And so I always like, turn that first line around instead of like saying, are you struggling and, and blah, blah, blah. I would be like, how would you like to finally have all of those ideas that you've been having actually turn into a thriving, you know, income maker for your business or something like that. You see how that slight change of tone, I'm saying the same thing, but instead I'm empowering them. I'm, I'm getting them to say yes to that first line versus like saying, Yes. Okay, how's this first line? Business owners can't seem to get started and feeling that there are too many ideas to ever get started. Yeah, I'm not really in love with it. You're seeing, you say started twice in that same line. Yeah, I saw that. Like I would say, I would, I would flip this around. Business owners, how would it feel to finally get all of your ideas come to life and create Ooh. that thriving business that you know you find that you've been dreaming of or something like that you okay. see how empowering that is yeah. like business owners want to finally put all of those ideas into something that's going to work and give you a win for your business or something like that okay and I because the then they'll be like yes i'm ready because i i can identify that i always have like my wife always has to ring me in like laurel Let's make one idea happen before we make the other 20. Cause we're so, we're so visionaries, right? We're not, we're not very like organized in our thoughts. We're just visionary. We see the, we see the bigger picture and we have all these ideas, but we struggle to make them happen because we've got so many things going at one time. Okay. All right. I'll work on that. Yep. All right. What's, I'm gonna keep going. Okay, let's keep, let, yeah, let's keep, let's keep, let's keep going. Yep. So let's see. It wasn't until I found the keys to getting myself unstuck and finally moving forward after the passing of my father. It was at his funeral. I was crying over his casket, not because I missed him so, but because my excuse was gone. Hmm. That's very, I, I, I mean, that's a very powerful statement right there. He was my excuse for why I didn't feel successful, even though this is freaking amazing. Like this is a really good story. Um, he was my excuse for why I didn't feel successful, even though I had a great job. It was there that I realized that I was responsible for my life, whether he was there for me the way I thought he should have been or not. When this hit me, I forgave him and decided to stop living for other people and their dreams and decided to create and live my own life. So here is where I would bring back that first statement. When this hit me, I forgave him and decided to stop living for other people and finally invest the time in bringing all of my business ideas into my reality. Right. So now we're tying the store. We're tying that first line in with this line right here, because this is where you're going to start talking about how you dug yourself out of it and got yourself to the next level. Okay. One of my dreams was to figure out a way to use what I've learned to help other people. I found that way through my live masterclass. It is designed to teach people to dig. So here's where, here's where, we really need to work. We need to really massage this script. So okay. when the, so after we, it, let's see, it was there. I realized that I was responsible for my life, whether he was there for me 
the way I thought he should have been or not. When this hit me, I forgave him and decided to stop living for other people and finally bring all of my business ideas into a reality. Dot, 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 no matter who tried to stop me, right? Very powerful. Here's what, one of my dreams was to figure out a way to use what I've learned to help other people. So I would, I would get away with that line. It's like, it's a little too fluffy for me. Okay. Um, so here's where you're missing. You're missing the part where you came up with the solution and, or how you, oh. how you came up with the, with this, with this method. Okay. Okay. Right. Cause you say, I have found that way through my live masterclass. Did you have that masterclass and you watched your own masterclass? And cause that's how it reads, right? Like you watched your own masterclass and then finally like, like tell me a little bit more about like, okay, after you finally started doing the work and putting your dreams into reality, what was it? Did you put all of that? What did, what did you do? And how did you put that into a method that's now going to help people? Right. It was creating the vit, learning how to create an, um, a solid, clear, and concise vision statement. That's so how that. did you do that? What did you do? So like, like, did you push everything off the table, grabbed your poster board, started putting your vision board together, put in together a 20 day plan or whatever. You see where I'm going, how like you're missing yeah. that process okay. of how you got to the solution that you're offering people. Okay. I love that. It's, it's literally using my DSO formula, desire, story, and offer. Okay. All right. I'll work on it. I see what you're saying. Absolutely. Good story here though. Thanks. Like it's just, it's just, it just needs, a, it just needs a little massaging. All right. Cool. Yep. Yep. Let's see. When picking your vanity URL, here's a question. When picking your vanity URL, do you focus on the outcome, something catchy, or just something you like? So it depends. I always like to say exactly what it is, right? Like my vanity URL, add coaching for seven. You kind of know what it is just by reading it, right? One of the things that you, you don't want to shortcut, or because I see so many people like, like doing biz for you, and it's like B-I-Z for the number four, you, right? That's so confusing. Like if you're on stage and you say the vanity URL, you want to, without a doubt, make sure that if someone goes and attempts to type that into your phone, like into their phone, that they're gonna come up on your website. If there's a chance that someone, like that's why like, you know, people are like, well, what about my name? You think if I got on stage and, and said, everyone go to laurelporte.com, do you think half of those people are going to end up on my website? Probably not, <laughs> you know? But like one of my other vanity URLs that I'm about to launch something else, ads with Laurel. Very easy, right? Ads with Laurel. Ad coaching for seven. Um, those are all things that are very easy to remember. So whenever I'm coming up with a vanity URL, I am a huge fan of like just say what it is in a very simple term. Short and sweet. So, yep, yeah, Chris says, hey, y'all. I love y'all. I say y'all, too, So I'm from South Louisiana. Okay. Hey, y'all, I'm struggling with getting my offer in front of the right audience on Facebook with the organic means. I joined a bunch of groups and went to a bunch of vocal coach websites. I'm a vocal coach. Okay, cool. To see the coaching ads, and I ended up just seeing random advertisements for music schools with some comments, but really sure what to do next. Try to friend everyone in the comments. I wouldn't try to friend people in the comments. It depends on what people are saying. So one of the things that I always do is I always try to get like into my competitors ads, right? Because most people who run advertisement, they're, they're not actually like watching the comments at all. So that's like a little ninja hack. So if you can't find the right groups to interact in or engage with, go find your competitors websites, get into their advertising, and let them pay to put your people in front of you in your newsfeed, right? And so if you find that people are not answering like their questions, I always give gurus like two to three days to answer people. And if not, I am moving in on their ad people. Like I'm moving in on the comments on their ads. Most people who are running ads, they don't even know that there's comments on their ads at all. And so that's where I like to swoop in and just give value and just like add those people and start conversations. But this is, this is like, this is the very important thing though. If you're gonna do that, you better make damn well sure that your profile is optimized. 
I just created a brand new video for the membership site because some people didn't like the fact that I had used a master class. Whatever. Anyway, I'm not going to get into that. Sabrina's laughing because her and I had this like really long conversation. But like go watch that brand new video about how to optimize your profile. I made it short and sweet because that will be the biggest. And I, I forget who had a very big win with that this past week. They started engaging with people in other groups and literally we're getting clients because that first piece of content on her page was literally a, that was talking directly to her, to her ideal audience. And so it's super important. Like if you're posting cat memes and you're, you're talking a whole bunch of BS on your profile and you're engaging with other people in the group and they visit your profile and they don't know what you do within five seconds. It's my five second rule. If I go to every single one of your profiles right now and I can't figure out what you do in five seconds, we need to change that five seconds. Like literally it's, it happens that fast. There's never been anyone that I have added that has been like, why the hell did you add you? I actually get a lot of messages of people that thank me for adding them. They're like, Oh my God, I've been looking for someone just like you. I'm looking to learn ads. And so that's something that's super, super important. So my question to you, Chris, if you're, are you still on here? He might not still be on here. Okay. I guess maybe he had to go. Okay. Well then. Okay, cool. Um, let's see. Tracy Davis. Are you still here? Let's see. Yeah, she is. I see her. She's in the weight loss niche. I created an ebook called slimming without starving. I love that. I want to, I'm very objective. I, I have lots of <laughs> objections about that offer, but, um, ebook called slimming without starving. I want to offer it for free for top of funnel. Do you feel that will trigger anything having trouble getting my ads approved? Probably so the, the weight loss niche is very, very hard. So Tracy, tell me a little bit about some of the, the stuff that's in your lead magnet. Okay. Can you hear me? I can. You've got a beautiful wall back there. <laughs> it's actually, it's actually one of my favorite colors. Yeah, I have fuchsia everywhere, but oh yeah, I'm a fuchsia girl. <laughs> so basically in the slimming, it's just basically talking about clean eating, things like that, you know, just very, very general, but I want it to, because previously, like last year, um, I would have like a, a product of the day. I really like doing videos and they were approved. I'm like today's product of the day. And then this year I wanted to run the same ad, but change my URL. Oh, I'm totally gone. So what's your, new, what's your URL? What's your new URL? Um, let's see. The one that I'm using now is 90dayslay.net. Okay. How do you spell slay? S-L-A-Y? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Um, so when it comes to the weight loss niche, one of the things that's going to get ads approved is telling your own personal story, right? So I was actually just like approving copy today in the, pre in, in the premium. And I really loved the first statement that she wrote. It was like, oh man, it was like, um, do you, you know, like every, you know, I used to imagine being Jennifer Aniston in Hollywood skinny. That was how she started it. And like immediately I, I connected with that. And then she started telling her story of how she's gone through all of these fad diets and everything. I immediately was like a plus for you because I just literally like just hearing that one statement, like comparing yourself to, you know, Jennifer Aniston Hollywood, mm -hmm. I immediately resonated. And so that's, that's the secret to getting weight loss ads approved is one telling a story without mentioning like pointing people out or saying, you know, like, are you feeling fat or whatever? Like, but empowering them, their desire outcome, right? Because most of us who want to lose weight, it's not about just lose. It's not, it's not actually about quote losing weight. It's about, you know, feeling amazing in our clothes. It's about, you know, being able to wear our wedding dress. It's about being able to have the energy to play with our kids and all of that fun stuff. And so what I would do if I were you, Tracy, and this will be really good, a really good exercise actually for everyone who's sitting in on this call. This is some, an exercise I do with a lot of my ad clients is I literally just say, go to Google docs and literally just type out 10 different scenarios that your person is going through as they're reading your ad right now. Are, did they just get home from work and they're drinking a bottle of wine because they're so stressed out and that's leading to their weight gain? Is it because they have played with their kids all day and ate junk with their kids or, and they're feeling, you know, bloated from, you know, that type of stuff? 
So I would literally just write down specifically those types of scenarios because that right there is going to hook your audience and make your audience go, that's me. Like that's, that's, that's where I feel like a lot of people go a little bit too broad in their, in casting their wide net. Mm -hmm. And so I think that that's going to help you to identify like all of the different scenarios that's going to hook people into wanting that, what you have. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you this. So even with that ebook, because I have done ads where it's direct to the particular product. Right? Oh yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Right. And so, um, this was a different strategy of, Hey, let's get them into my email list so that I can talk about whatever I want to. Yep. So exactly. Even with, that, even with telling my story, which I don't really quote unquote have a weight loss story. Mine was more or less a health and wellness story, but I can still tie it. I'm sure. It, it all, it all, yeah, it's all, it's all, it's all tied together. Cause like I said, most people, it's not about like losing, losing weight is like the, is the problem, mm -hmm. but it's not the, the end goal that for so many people. Right. Right. Everybody has an A, but different B reasons. Gotcha. So yeah. So one of the things that you're also going to have to be careful of is your landing page. Okay. Facebook is like, Facebook not only looks at your ad, but it looks at your landing page too. Okay. Okay. One other thing pertaining to that, because it is a, it's the weight loss uh, niche, but it's also network marketing. Right. And I know they hate another it. double. So you got a double whammy going on. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why I felt like I needed to get them in my email list and kind of talk from that standpoint. Are there particular keys? Like, don't even say this. Don't, don't even, even mention your network marketing company. Cause, and this is, this is one of the things that I, that I work, that I work on with people individually is like, we have to, you have to build content around yourself as this expert, right? Because if your network market marketing company goes away tomorrow, do you still have a business? You want to be able to say yes, right? Because you can always just go and get another product in that same niche to promote. Right. And so think about what you can do. I'll, I'll give you an example. So one of my clients, um, one of my students, a long time student, she actually is in one of those CBD network marketing companies, mm -hmm. but we didn't market her as the, you know, the, the CBD expert, you know, um, Angela probably knows who I'm talking about, but we marketed her as a naturopathic expert, right? Mm -hmm. So she was doing, she was doing different types of, of content that was like helping people with autoimmune. So we, we narrowed down who she was talking to, right? Because she was personally using this product to help alleviate her autoimmune disease. And so we designed a program to where she could build herself up as this naturopathic solution for autoimmune disease, never even mentioning her CBD product ever. They allowed her to mention the disease because that's kind yep. of zoning in. Oh, you can. Okay. Yep. Okay. That sounds good. Sounds yep. Good. She would base, and basically she started a 30 day quick start on the autoimmune, like, cause they, cause you, if you like discover that you have autoimmune disease, it's not only about like taking CBD, but it's about changing your diet and all of this other stuff. And so basically she was like, you know what? I started doing all these things. I can help other people start doing all these things and alleviate their symptoms too. Excellent. Excellent. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Yeah, absolutely. That was a, that was a really great question. Um, let's see, Jake, 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 how are you? You and the wifey, huh? Hey. Hello. How are you? Hi, Jake and wife. What's your wife's name? Hi, I'm Ashley. Hi, Ashley. Nice to meet you. So nice to meet you too. You guys have a challenge coming up, huh? We do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're uh, uh, kicking off on Monday. So registration. Ooh, very Monday. short time. Okay. Yeah. Tell well, we started. Uh, we started filling it. Started advertising for it um, last Thursday. Thursday. Yeah. yeah a last, week ago. Yeah, last. So we had about a ten-day run-up, which you know is. It's a long, that's a long time. You 47 know. clicks and 22 leads. That's good. That's, that's like a, almost a 50% opt-in rate. That's really yeah, good. it's about 47%. And, and again, it's about $7 a lead across all campaigns. That includes the retargeting. Okay. Um, so it's about $5 a lead just on the conversion campaigns. And then about, and then with the retargeting, 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 I had questions about because. Do you want to, can you, do you want to pull up your ad account? I, this is, this is where I jam. So if yep, you guys yep. want to pull up your ad account, I'll, um, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. There's a couple of things that will troubleshoot because, because $7 a lead, I'm not totally happy with. Yeah. Um, it, it's, it's kind of industry standard now for leads to be higher, but let's see where we can improve that for sure. Okay. Cool. Cool. You got it. So, um, this is, so here's a conversion. 
here's a video views of just stuff that we're running through, you know, through plays and then retargeting across that. So, yep. I was so yeah, let's take a look at the ad sets for your challenge. Okay. Okay, cool. So, okay. yeah, so we're, not, we're not running. We're not, another one. I would definitely turn that one off. Yeah. yeah. Um, can you scroll to the right and then you see where those three bars are? Um, yes. Toggle that to performance and clicks. Yep. That's there. Okay, cool. So pull it all the way to the right. Okay, cool. So here are some KPIs that I track whenever I'm troubleshooting whether what I can do to get better priced opt-ins. Okay. First KPI that I'm looking for is CTR all. Mm -hmm. I want that to be 3% or more. Guess what? Yeah. All of your numbers, I'm not hating. Even the 2.28%, 2.49%, I'm okay with. I think that it's okay. Um, could it be better? Absolutely. I'm seeing that, you know, the let's see large group layered the one at the bottom is 3.1 percent and then there's another one that's 3.11 what i'm not loving is the 0.42 with the ctr link click throughs it means on that particular ad set people are not resonating with the copy so if you're looking at ctr so if we're looking at ctr all mm -hmm. you want that to be three percent or more if that's not 3% or more, like you have like at the bottom one, it's 1.22 and then the top is 2.49 and then you have one that's 2.28. Yep. CTR all means that either your audience or your creative is off. So there's, there's two parts where you can improve creative to improve the CTR link click through, which means that if that's 1% or less, that means that not enough people are clicking the mm -hmm. link via the copy. So that's how we know the copy is off. And so, oh. so the first ad set where you have 1.10, the one thing that you can improve on that one is the CTR all, right? Because your link click through is 1.10, which is good. It's 1% or above. People are resonating with the, with the, with the copy. They're not resonating with the creative. So if, think about this, and, and this is something for everyone to think about, if they improve that CTR all to 3%, it's automatically going to improve all of their numbers after that, okay? So the next one, 3.11% for the CTR all. Mm -hmm. Excellent. People that your audience is, is resonating with that creative, good job. They're not resonating with the copy. So therefore the copy is the problem in here. So this is how we, we, we go by each little thing and troubleshoot what's wrong with the funnel. We don't have enough click throughs on that one to determine that the funnel's not converting, but here's the good thing for you guys and kudos to you guys. You guys have a 50, almost a 50% conversion rate. Mm -hmm. So the problem is not the funnel that I like from my expertise, it's not the funnel. It's the, it's, it's the ads on the front end. So we already know in the first one, we can improve the creative. Mm -hmm. Test them, Chris. Here's the, th here's the thing. Never replace things that are working. Mm -hmm. Duplicate it and test another creative in its place. In the second one, duplicate it. Create some new copy for that one. Okay. The third one, the link click-through is close to 1%. I'm okay with that. The 2.28, again, the creative. Okay. On the last one, 3.10, 1.77. Good job. That one is getting people to stop the scroll. Two, it's getting people to click over to the ad. Mm -hmm. um, the last one, which you've already turned off, the, the, the creative is definitely, my guess is probably maybe the audience is probably off since the, the creative and the, C, the link click. Yeah, that was, that was just a very large, broad, cold audience right and then these others are these others are layered uh triple layered you know just down through the same kind of audience so we're looking at something that's a little bit more dialed in on these can you can you scroll a little bit to the left where do you want me to go all the way yep okay yep so you can so you can definitely improve on that first one and that, definitely that second one, right? Totally. Um, so I would, I would just duplicate, I would turn, I would duplicate it, turn it off um, and just try an, a different creative where the, where you had less than 3% for those um, click through alls. I would just 
play test. I, I think it was what the first one and the third one that had like the low CTR all. Yeah. Yeah. I would do. I would never. I'd never turn off things that are getting leaps. I just always add other ad sets and see if I can get better results. Okay. So <laughs> yeah. you guys are doing good. It's just. It's just a matter of optimizing to get those lower costs per lead. Okay. Okay. Cool. And then, as far as like, when do you actually start making the call on that? So like, how long do you let it go? Because obviously. <laughs> you know, it changes over time. So is it is it based on how much reach is pretty much had? No, I never I never really make any big decisions before I have two thousand impressions. Okay. Let okay. me ask you this. Do you have this on campaign budget optimization or is this on um No. Nope. Okay. Nope. No, no, I'm not doing no, not CBO. So it's just okay. just open. Yep. So those so those are those would be my recommendations and and I would test that I, for conversion campaigns, I try to go $10 a day. Yeah. Okay. okay. Awesome. Okay. And then as far as just real quick too, then as far as like the, the retargeting, um, you know, the retargeting, I just, I feel like it just doesn't have as enough, enough information to really kind of fire. So, really, oh, it, it's, well, it's spending, right? Um, well, actually, the, 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 yeah, two of them are. So the okay. re this is just a brand build kind of video that had some engagement that I'm pushing out. And it's really, I just did it as to make sure I'm just kind of in front it's, of them. It's really good. And this is a good opportunity to talk about this because so many people, I don't measure KPIs for retargeting. Okay. Right. Like, you know how I was having the conversation earlier when we first started, it's like, it's just retargeting. I look at it as reminders, right? Mm -hmm. We might not need that product at that time, but it's constantly on, it stays top of mind. So I don't, I don't try to like judge my retargeting ads too much. It's just one step. It's, I think of retargeting ads as one piece of content closer to the yes. Okay. Gotcha. It might not be the yes at that moment, but it's helping people get there. Okay. All right. And then, so, and then this one has no reach. Um, Man, I, you know, I just, I jumped it up knowing that it's just maybe the Kickstarter, but. It, well, it's because like, you don't have enough people who aren't registering. That's, that's what I figured. Because you have, yeah, you have like only what, 20, it's only like 22 people that have right. it. Mm -hmm. right? right, that's what I figured. Okay, okay, cool. Okay, Good so. Job. All right, cool, awesome. Thank right. you so much. I, I don't hate You're it. You're very welcome. Was that helpful? <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Well, it's just nice to know like where to hone in and where we can modify to hopefully improve in the last like four days before we launch this thing so well and then also like again having that metric for copy versus creative mm -hmm. and what to look at because obviously i mean we've we've turned off and on and we try new things and we do three sets of this and then hey right. well, let's test this short with this bit i mean it's you know we're shooting in the dark and then looking at numbers but i don't know what numbers look at other than what's producing leads you know what i mean so Either way. Yeah, that's always that's always where I start. I like invert. I'm like, okay, it's I, it might not be the funnel because like most people they want to go and change the funnel, and it, it's 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 usually most people have the disconnect usually with creative, mm -hmm. but they don't yeah. even know it. <laughs> totally. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, you're very welcome. Let's see. Jen asked a really good question. So I heard you mention Bitly. Is that how you got the vending URL, or do you actually per I actually purchase a domain name? Bitly is no good. Um, it, it's good for link shorteners, but Facebook advertising will reject your ad if it's got a bit.ly in it. It does not like bit.ly. Like if you're getting away with it, you're not going to get away with it for long and it will get your ad rejected. Um, I, I so just went in today and I saw the video and I heard you mention bit.ly in the video and I know bit.ly works well if you have a large pointer to like an article mm -hmm. you want to share. But I okay, didn't absolutely. think it would work well for a vanity URL. Yeah, I wouldn't, even though it's better than nothing, right? Like one time I went on a podcast, I didn't have my vanity URL. I mean, bit.ly slash $7 coaching was my, was my saving grace for not having a URL because people were familiar. But um, after that, I quick, once I started seeing the traffic that came to that bit.ly from that podcast episode, I was like, okay, I need to go get a vanity URL because this shit works. Okay. And so that's why that's how I ended ended up with my vanity URL. Plus, you're gonna want to burn your vanity URL in on all of your videos. I think Angela does this. Um, don't you, Angela? You burn your URL into all of your videos. 
Yeah, I, I put a lower third at the bottom with trademarkdoctor.net on it. I, yeah, I stole that idea. I've been doing that to like literally all my videos because every time I see Angela, I see trade, like I know like her website, like, cause I'm right. just so familiar with it. Yeah, I, I just put my name and then trademarkdoctor.net. And um, that way, if anyone shares my video, downloads my video, uploads my video, whatever they do with my video, my face, my URL and my name are on it. Yep. Absolutely. Let's see. Hey, Laurel, since targeting is expensive and don't want to over target for video views, what sort of audience size are we looking for? So for pretty much across the board, what I'm looking for is 500,000 to 2.1 million, typically in an audience. The caveat to that is, or the exception is if you're targeting a local audience, your local audience is going to be much smaller. But if you're targeting a, a, a broader audience, I'm looking for 500,000 to 2.1 million. Um, in each each of my ad sets. Yep, yeah, Paul, what's up? Am I the only one that has a drink right now? I'm only not seeing anyone drinking. Okay. My, my, okay. my drink got my drink got uh it's warm, so I can't drink it right now. Okay, okay, okay. And I wanted to say I actually live I I just moved to Indiana, but I lived in Metairie before, so it was cool to when I saw your ad, I was like, oh, holy shit, she's from Louisiana. So Wow, you um, saw my ad, huh? <laughs> Yeah, like a couple months ago. So I have two, I have two questions. Um, <clears throat> my first question is, uh, so I work for a roofing company and you, know, you were talking like, oh, $7 a lead is way too expensive. You know, typically the lead that I, cause so a typical roof is like- For you, it's, a, it's an exception. Uh, you're, a local, you're a local business like generating leads that's going to be worth, you know, typically thousands. Right, it's like 25, $30 a lead, but I got those down, way down than what the, the previous person was, was at, but my question is most of, most of where I'm targeting is for the end all phone call to the owner. Yep. Um, but the owner doesn't want to track calls. So what I, I caught the, I, I came on a little bit, a couple minutes after you started. So I missed the part where you were talking about, um, um, you know, Hey, you, you see these ads so many times, like you don't really know when they're going to, you know, when it's going to convert what what do you what do you suggest in because i'm so i'm our social media manager and this is my first kind of like advertising job my background is in video and media creation but really my question is how do i how do i convey to the owner and to the vice president that you know i'm not gonna be able to show results all the time like you know it's like you know for instance my boss is like paul i don't want you to test like we don't need a test and you know you just need to put an ad out there and we need to, you know, throw some money behind it. And we need to get phone calls. And I'm like, well, Doug, it doesn't work like that. Like, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to like test this audience. I'm going to test this audience. I'm going to see what works, see what doesn't work. Like, he just kind of thinks like, you know, you have this amazing piece of content and you put it out and everybody's, you know, the phone's going to ring, you know, times a million. And it's, I'm just, I, so how, how do I kind of tell them that like, hey, like, these are the things that I have to do. And this is why I have to do it without, without kind of sounding, you know, like, condescending and without, you know, because again, you know, they want to see results, but they won't track the phone calls that are coming in and they won't take my suggestions on like tracking, you know, they don't, they won't even ask, Hey, how did you hear about us? He's like, that takes too long. I forget about it. So it's like, you know, I feel like all the work that I'm doing, once it gets to the end of the pipeline, you know, it, it just kind of drops off. Um, and then my, my second question is, and this will be, you know, a shorter one is the, um, I've, I went through and consolidated all the courses that I've either bought or like subscribed to. How do you get over like course fatigue or like over consuming of content as opposed to just like doing it? Like, I feel like, a, like I'm trying to start, I'm trying to do some drop shipping as well, but I feel like I've gotten stuck in like the nervous side of like, I know how to do the Facebook mark. I know how to do, you know, Facebook advertising. I know how to create content, but it's the, just actually like doing it. So those yep. are my two things. So I appreciate yep, it. Absolutely. So let's tackle the first one first. I got a really good solution. So I worked in television for 19, 19 years. So I've got all of this data. Do your bosses know how much it would actually cost to run a television commercial for 30 seconds inside their market? Uh, we don't have um, a way to do television advertising in, in the, they don't have, we don't have a local network that does uh, television advertising, but, right. but, would they, but they don't know, would they but know they wouldn't know that answer. Okay. How much does a billboard cost in your town? Uh, I, I don't know. Would they be, I think would they, would in they my previous town, you, it was 
Yeah. Would they be asking you the same question about a billboard? If you had a billboard for their offer in town, would they be asking, what is the ROI? What is the, no, you can't yeah. measure it. You cannot measure success from a billboard. You cannot measure success from a commercial. You can, however, measure exact success from a Facebook ad. And this is one thing that I always, always, and it's all about not being condescending or, you know, passive aggressive to, towards them. It's our jobs as social media managers to educate them on how cheap Facebook advertising is. And so it's really our job to show them the numbers. If you can get like even with localized targeting people to watch a 30 second Facebook commercial on your company for a hundred percent for like pennies on the dollar, they're not going to get that type of advertising on television. They're not going to get that type of advertising on radio, like hands down what you're doing for them on social media. Think about this. You can't target radio ads. You can't target, like you're literally getting their content, their offer in front of their ideal customers for pennies on the dollar. And so that's just one thing that I would do is like take screenshots in the ads manager. This month we got in front of, you know, 10,000 of your ideal customers that are going, that's going to compound over time, right? We have to, we have to constantly educate our people. It's like, yeah, they might not have bought here again. Remember how I was saying like people don't just watch a TV commercial and go and click on the remote and buy right then and there, right? right. It's right. about, and especially with roofing, that's not something that people buy on a whim. That's not something that people, that, that people are going to buy like two to three years, right? You, you need a new roof, like probably like two or three times in your lifetime. And yeah. so it's important that we just educate our clients on, Hey, this week, this amount of people engaged with your content, the calls are starting to come. Are you doing click to call ads or what type of ads are you doing for them? Uh, I'm doing engagement, doing uh, traffic ads, like running traffic to the, to our website. The one, the one issue I'm finding with running traffic to the website is, um, in analytics, Google analytics, it, they're, like it's it's killing our time on page uh, time. So uh, yeah, so there people are coming to the site, but they're only staying for you know twenty seconds, 10, 15 seconds. Yeah, uh, and that's not and that's not your fault. That's right. a, their website needs to be optimized. One of the quickest ways to like shut an and, and I mean this in a very respectful way to shut a business owner off is to compare one month of running advertisement with their analytics and then completely shut them off and then run their analytics one month later and compare the two. Like even with a $5 a day ad spend, it's crazy freaking like so much better. Like right. on a $5 a day ad spend, you can get like hundreds of thousands of views. Yeah. Right. And so it's like on $150 versus, you know, like what would you rather like, you know, pay me to do this for you and have like a constant flow of, of potential customers or, What's your better solution? Are you going to go pay $10,000 for a billboard? Are you going to go pay $10,000 for a radio? Are you going to go pay? Like, what is, what is their other solution for getting advertising? Nothing. Like if they don't use you, they don't have a way to drive traffic on a daily basis to their offer. Well, and you know, they, um, so like I said, I do all the media, like the, so I'm a, I'm a videographer by trade. So I, and a, and a drone uh, videographer as well. So I run a lot of video ads uh, and then retarget, uh, based on the engagement. So I'll usually do the, the through plays and then like, you know, I, at least 50% because I know if they typically they're in between 30 seconds and a minute. So it's like, if I know that they watch at least 30 seconds, I know that they were somewhat engaged. So then I would retarget. Um, so I, I have found that typically it takes five or six ads before someone will actually in, interact with, you know, a, like comment or message, um, so yeah, I, yeah. Yep. I mean that, I mean, that's like, a, that's just a huge problem. It's just like educating them on, Hey, this is what we're doing every single month. Like one of the things like, um, I had a student of mine, Dustin, who was, ha was having to like answer to chiropractors. Right. And it's like, well, you know, he was getting traffic in to their actual, to their actual shop. But one thing that they were, they were blaming him for like all these poor leads, even though he was getting leads into their, their chiropractory, their practice, right? 
And they were coming, his leads were coming in, getting their adjustment and then leaving and never booking again. And the business owner was like trying to blame him for having poor quality leads. But come to find out, it wasn't that he was getting poor quality leads. It was something within, it was the desk person that was just sucky. Uh, and like was not re was not doing her part in the business to get those leads back into the door. And so that's one of the things that we have to protect ourselves as social media managers is that, Hey, we're doing our job, but at the end of the day, all of the businesses that we're working for, they have to do their part on the follow-up. Like your, your business owner has to be calling people back. Like I got fired for, from one of my very first social media jobs um, because I was bringing in too many leads that they couldn't take, they couldn't keep up with. Well, that's his problem. That's He'll not, miss a phone that's call. Not, that's not our, that's not our problem, right? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So your second question, how do yes. you keep from overwhelm? You just fucking turn everything off and focus on one thing. It's literally as simple as that. Like I suffer from the same freaking thing. Like I actually just talked about this on our premium program today because someone had a $37 offer and I was like, Oh my God, I am the worst for binge watching $37 products right now. I don't know what has been in the air. I've, I've been buying every fucking thing for $37 right now. And I've got like this, no long, my wife is like, what the fuck did you just buy? And I'm like, I, I don't even know right now. Like I just, I needed it. It was no brainer. And so I, so I suffer from that too. I love you. What I if, thought I was the only one that did that. Oh no. <laughs> one of the things I literally just had to do was literally separate myself from social media. I took Facebook off my phone. I just have Instagram and I had to take myself out of email. So I'm not getting all of the emails that are, that are tempting me with all of this stuff. I have Voxer so that I can talk to Sabrina. But like, other than that, like I don't have anything social media on my phone. I don't look at my email. Now I have a VA that like messages me the important emails over Slack. Like when she doesn't know how to answer people. Um, so yeah, you just have to like remove yourself. I had to remove myself from so many groups. Like I'm in, I'm doing Stu McLaren's tribe right now, which by the way is going to make the $7 program so much freaking better already. Like I've been two weeks into Stu McLaren's program and there are so many things I'm doing wrong with the $7 program. I'm like, holy fuck, I got to go change this shit. But I had to literally two weeks ago dedicate. I'm like, I'm, I'm paying $2,000 for this program. So I need to focus. And so I'm not looking at email. I'm not like, I've got someone, you know, looking and helping me answer the questions in the $7 group as needed. I just, you just have to like cut everything off and just focus. It's really, it's really just like that, <laughs> that easy. It's hard because I, like I said, I have a dark week every fourth week and my students know this, like every fourth week I take off. We don't have any coaching calls or anything. And I dedicate that fourth week of every single month to me educating myself and taking the time to go through those courses and creating my content and everything yep. so it's just good to like have that like you just have to be very disciplined okay so that, i know that that's not like a an easy solution but it's like it's no it's I, like no bs solution yeah right right well i i really appreciate you answering both those questions for me so thank yeah. you oh you're very very welcome let's see Let's see, da, da, da. went to Paul. David says, I started this week running the same video in three different reach video view messages, same lookalike. Is there a benefit to doing this? David, are you on the call? Let's see, is he still on the call? I'm not really sure what he means by that. Okay, let's see, who else? Hey, I did have so, one other question, Laurel. Yeah, absolutely, hit me, hit me with um, it. I want you to take a look at this video, tell me what you thought that I'm gonna run. It's not long. If you, can I share my screen? Is that okay? Yeah, absolutely. All right. Um, it is, uh-oh. I'm sorry. Yeah, no worries. I forgot how to do this thing. Here we go here, share screen. Can I just say that like, I've got like a wine shirt on but I'm drinking whiskey. That's, I totally had the are. intention of drinking wine during this call, but at the last minute, I was like, can we go get some crown? This is very random. Let's see. Can you see it or no? Yeah.
Can you play it? Can you play it from the beginning? <laughs> I get it. I think it takes a little bit too long to get to the point, but once you got to the point, it helped me. I hold on. Let me stop this. I can't hear you. Oh. All right, say that again. I think I think just between that first line and the second line, just make it come in a little bit faster. Because at first I was confused, okay. but then like as soon as you brought in, I was like, ah, plant yourself on the couch. That's so funny. Okay. Like so, so shorten it up a little bit. Just shorten it up a little bit. Just tighten it up to where it, get, it gets a little. It's just a little tighter. Okay. I love the graphics. I think the graphics are really cute. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Trademark. It's, it's, a, it's a really cool thing. Have you started um, releasing pages for parents to um, like for free for parents to like let their kids start coloring? Um, I have. I've sent out. Uh, well, I've actually sent four books out, and I've gotten two videos back for like content. Um, awesome. Yeah, because I would actually like in your power content give away. Hey, do you want you know do you want a sample of you know and let your kids color this? Like, drop me a line below, and I'll send you a free PDF that you could print out and let your kids start coloring. So, and then have them send you a photo so that you can post it later. So that was part of my, my second question I had. Yep. Um, the pre-sale period is running from like till June 15th. And that's where I'm going to allow people to put a message in the book for their daughter, sister, neighbor, or niece, a custom message that everybody will see. And then after that time, it's going to be straight the coloring book. So my question was, do I, because... I'm not giving away, okay, let me slow down. I have, I have a system set up in place, five free pages where I can give them five coloring pages to color. Okay. But that kind of defeats the purpose of the pre-sale period when I'm trying to just sell books. I think the five free pages will come in better after the pre-sale period is over with. What are your thoughts? Because, so my strategy that I mapped out was if I'm sending them to the to the offer directly and they don't buy, like the second retargeting sequence is to the five free pages. Hey, get, get a sample of what you'll be buying. Does that make sense? I would just start giving people. I would honestly, this is my this is just my because I'm I'm all about like get those coloring pages in as many parents' hands as humanly possible right now. That would be my, that would literally be my tactic until you launch. Like put your what, put your, put your vanity URL for your launch on those coloring pages so that those parents like literally just have that in their face all the time. Okay. So you're saying just flood the market with the five free pages. I would, I wouldn't even do five. I would just like, anytime you, you, you have a chance, give them one. Don't, you don't have to give them five. Like anytime you go live talking about your book, like, Hey parents, you know, we, you know, we just, you know, we're about to release this book. I want to give you guys a free page, you know, let your kids color this, blah, blah, blah. Drop me a line below. It gives you a chance to have that conversation with them in messenger. And then also follow up with them. Once you do release the book, you're going to have a whole bunch of parents in your messenger that are going to like be totally hot to buy what you have. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. It's just all about like getting, getting those pages out and sharing like having those, those parents, like even just ask them, Hey, once your kid colors this, can I use this in marketing? People love like posting about how awesome their kids color. Hey, can I make a suggestion too? Yep, absolutely. If you don't want people copying and redistributing your um, copyrighted material and remember your copyright attaches as soon as you create it, even if you don't register it. Um, put a copyright notice on the bottom and say all rights reserved, reproduction prohibited without this notice or, I mean, whatever you want, but if you don't want people making copies and distributing it, you should put that on the sheet that you're giving away. And I would put a copyright notice on anything that you print because people are crazy. They don't realize that just because it doesn't have a copyright notice on it, they think that they can just do whatever they want with it. You know, so I would always put your URL at the bottom so that people can go buy, right? Like if someone says, oh, this is super cool, where can I get one? You want to drive them to your URL, but you also want to know that, hey, it's not acceptable to like copy this and redistribute it. Okay. So on a people will do all kinds of crazy stuff. <laughs>
That'll be in, that'll be $200 that you could send to Angela. No, no, don't send me anything. I'm just, telling you. <laughs> just <kidding. laughs> it's free. <laughs> so, da so David, let's go back. So let's go back to you. Um, you, can you, can you explain a little bit more about what your strategy is and what you're trying to do? Every time I call him, I think he like leaves <laughs> right before I go to him. That's the second time. Um, Hi, Laurel, can I jump in while we're waiting for him? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, if you were going to launch a challenge right now, mm -hmm. what would you do that two tier uh, power content that you were saying or how would you do it for videos? So I would do two things. I would run, is it a free challenge or a paid challenge? It, yeah, it's a free challenge. I would run cold traffic to it and then people who don't opt in, I would send them to the video funnel. Okay. Yeah. And, and that cold traffic, so you said that targeting is, is expensive, right? The more you target. The so, more you, yeah, the more, the more, the smaller the audience, the, the bigger, the, the larger Facebook will charge you. So should I just go for like 1.5 to 2 million then to start with? Do you think that would be? Oh yeah, absolutely. I would go between 500,000 to 2.1 million. Okay. I would go five, I would go five ad sets, $10 a piece, and then kill the ones that aren't performing the way that you want them to. Okay, perfect. Thank you. You are very welcome. Okay, well, I've got everyone's questions. Thank you guys for, uh, for coming and having a drink with me. Um, as always, we have these, um, we've got coffee and conversions on every first Monday at 8 a.m. Central. And then Thursdays, we've got cocktails and conversions. And as you guys know, we look at ads and we just talk strategy. Does anyone have any, you know, quick questions or any closings or any feedback on, on, you know, on the program? You know, I'm always open to suggestions or. It's um, or, a great, a great call today. Um, what, you said, too. what you said. I, I too. feel like we had a really good call today. Like, I feel like we threw a lot of stuff at you guys. <laughs> right. And I say and we, I mean me, but you know. And the part you, you shared with the couple um, about the metrics and if mm -hmm. this is that. Is, is there a breakdown of that somewhere? I want to say there is. I, and this is the problem. I put so much content out there. I need to, I need to organize it better. So my apologies for that. Um, I can give you my KPI. Remind me tomorrow. I'll post it for you guys. That I, I have it for my premium members, but I'll post it for you guys too, like my um, KPI cheat sheet. And, awesome. and to go hand in hand with that, could you also tell us what, um, add metrics up top we should have to um, the, the important headings on our um, ads manager like CTR um, the most important ones because some of them I didn't quite hear you okay yeah no yeah the, that's the KPIs to measure so I'll make right. sure that I'm that I'm labeling everything yeah absolutely I'll be happy to do that I don't okay. forget to send me the Instagram stuff <laughs> it's my it's, birthday it's, I told you I, I posted it I replied to your comments in the in the group I didn't find it because we, I gotta go and check it. Sabrina, oh, I sent you a message. It's in, the, it's in the Facebook group under your post. I, I posted it for you. Awesome. Sabrina, I'll get back to our little boxer boxer. Yes, I can't wait. If any of you guys need a funnel or anything, dude, Sabrina is like, she's amazing. Oh, she's thank you. She's, she's responsible for all the pretty things that you see in the $7 and the premium group, so. Thanks, Sabrina. <laughs> You're welcome. Well, you guys have an amazing night. If any of you guys want in on premium and you are you think you're ready, see me. I've got three spots available, so if you think you're ready to rock and roll and you want me to keep you accountable and kick your butt. Angela will tell you I'm really good at kicking butt whenever people don't, uh, don't Premium. turn in their work. <laughs> Premium's awesome, highly recommend it. Awesome. Oh yeah, Jackie, I gotta kick your butt for not showing up today's call, remind me. I know, but it's because I've been crushing it though. And you're, you're lucky I've got some whiskey right now. Otherwise I'd be like, you know, Instagram storing you. <laughs> yeah. oh, I'm doing good because of you, so. Oh, well, I, I appreciate that. Sorry, and Laurie, can, can we have much stuff on Instagram still in the seven program? Say what? Can we have more training about Instagram in the seven program? 
Absolutely. All you guys got to do is ask. I'll be more than happy. You know me. I, I can't help a good request. <laughs> I was searching for it. And TikTok also. Ugh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, that he was. <laughs> go, if you want TikTok stuff, go to Rachel Peterson. No. He's like killing it on TikTok right now. I hate it. I try. Ah, no, it's Instagram. Awesome. Well, you guys have an amazing night. Cheers. I have a question for you really quick. Absolutely. Um, yeah, sorry, I got on super late, so I'll make this really fast. But I'm um, so since I just proved that um, you know my offer does work or whatever, and that went so well, do I still need to? I'm curious about going to the premium at you know the level that I'm at because, and then maybe turning that workshop that I just did evergreen too, because it's hard to keep. Doing if you've proven an offer, you're ready for premium for sure. Okay. Okay. All right. Yep. That's definitely something I want to explore then. Yeah. It's super fun. Yeah. <laughs> what, was the price? what was the price of premium? Uh, or do you advertise that privately? Yeah, no, it's, it's, I'm, I'm not afraid. It's 197 a month. Okay. Yep. You get me as your personal ads consultant. So I help you with your ad strategy. I kick your butt when you don't execute the ad strategy correctly and I help you scale and optimize um, your ads. So it's basically, I help you do all of your ads, except you get to push the buttons and I tell you which buttons to press. Do you uh, have a certain, like I, I'm able to spend anywhere. Well, I'm, I can spend as much as I want as long as it brings results, but I've typically stayed around one to 2000 a month for the roofing company. Mm -hmm. Is that, is that enough for your program in or like in terms of like, or do you, do you typically work on a budget that's like thousands more thousands no, more. I've, got, I've got some students that are that are working with me and they're only doing a five dollar a day budget okay yep. there's no minute cool. there's no minimum budget it's it's just all about like the premium programs all about learning the strategy and how to maximize the budget that you do have okay okay yeah. Thank you. Absolutely. And so then what about when it comes to like our content, if we're still sort of sorting out, um, like, I mean, I know what I'm selling and I know everything, but com sometimes when it comes to organizing it all is where my creative mind falls short. I love so, to create. I so don't that's like a, so you, you'll have scripts and everything to follow. Okay. Um, so basically, I basically help you create the content. I help you write the ads. I've got templates for ad creation. I've got templates for video creation, pretty much everything. So basically the way that I created premium is all of the resources I give to my agency clients. I just put it in the premium program and help you guys do that instead of doing it for you. So, because once you have your offer dialed in, it makes it so easy to create content because one of the things that we're going to do is we're going to look at what your sales funnel is and what your offers like and create the content for each part of your funnel because the, the whole point of your, your ad strategy is to pull people through different parts of the funnel. So there's gonna be right. different parts of content that's optimized to do that. Okay. And is there a landing page to sort of see the premium like oh, yeah. layout? Oh yeah, absolutely. And what I absolutely. Would love to see so it. for anyone that's interested, let's see. Serena will correct me if I'm wrong. It's Laurel Portier slash Ad squad. Oops, I did it to a someone sent me a private message. Oopsie. Let's see. There we go. Okay. I think that's correct. Let me double check that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So that so if everyone goes to their chat and the, well whoever's interested, um, that's that's the link and you'll see all the all the goodies that you get and everything too. Plus awesome. being in my premium will get you a free seat in the 90 day stuff and all of that fun stuff too. Basically anyone who's in my premium gets access to any workshops I do or any like my six week ads intensives that I do, you get a free seat and all of that stuff too. I love seeing the inside of how somebody does their membership too. That's always fun for me. <laughs> yeah. Serena's helping me condense it because again, I always like to give, give, give content. And one of the things mm -hmm. I'm learning in Tribe is no, less content is more. <laughs> right, right. Cool. I'm gonna check it out. Awesome. We'd love to have you. And anyone else? Just uh, if you guys have any questions, check out the page and message me. Like I said, I've got three three spots. Um, I keep I cap it for a reason because I want the calls to be super small and very intimate so that everyone gets a chance in the hot seat is what we call them. Um, but it's a it's a very fun group. I do a, I do a lot to make sure that everyone who's in it is is highly qualified and you know is not gonna bring the whole group down and. I don't want it to turn into this big, huge program. I like having that intimate, you know, 
relationship with all of my students. Like, just like with the $7 group too. Like, I feel like everyone here who showed up tonight, I see your face, I see what you're going through and it just helps me help keep you guys accountable. I appreciate when coaches do that too. Cause there are yep. many that don't, yeah. They, they, get to, they get to that certain point where everything just becomes, you know, very passive and that's not the way that I want to build what I'm building, so. Cause this is the part that I enjoy. I don't ever want to not do this. Awesome. Well, you guys have a good night. Bye guys. Bye. Thank Bye. you. You're very welcome.